Right, welcome back to Queensville, and as you all know, this is Chris. Uh, already flat by the way today, and we're doing a video here of Music Zone, the shop that uh, was selling stuff for good prices and uh, some good prices, some <laughs> hardcore prices, and some cheap prices as well. And so, what we're going to do on this video is we're going to tell you about the history of this company, and also we're going to show you later on uh, what Chris bought from the shop originally. And he has, some, he has some information about it as well, which is interesting for you guys. But this is what we're going to start off with first. This is a print off we got off uh, Wikipedia about the shop, the shop itself. Now, these shops were going around in Sunderland from 2001 to 2007 when the company went out about a bust. But this is what this is the little story of how it was. Music Zone was a former retailer in the United Kingdom, form, formed in Levensham in 1984 as a market stall in Longside, Manchester. Soon after Music Zone opened its first permanent shop in Stockport and began to expand the Manchester region, rebranding itself to Music Zone Trade Direct and positioning itself to, as, a, as a value retailer. In spring 2005, Music Zone was sold in a management buyout for £12, 12 million, pound, backed by financially by the private equity firm Lloyd's Development Capital, as well as funds from board of directors. In the last 12 months, to the 31st of May 2005, the company made £4,000 pre-tax losses on sales of 70.4 70, million. In early 2006, the company bought out 41 outlets from the collapsed chain MVC, which we did have one in Newcastle. All expensive. stores, it was expensive that one, all stores were branded to Music Zone. The MVC acquisitors took the estate to 104 stores, marking the chain to those large capitalists special entertainment retailer in the United Kingdom. Less than 30 stores behind the, the nearest Vita, nearest rival, Virgin Megastore. We missed Virgin Megastore. It was good. What happened to it? Went wrong. But this is where, that, that's the very beginning bit. Now this is where it went all wrong. This is where it went all wrong at the time. In 2006, December 2006, um, the Bank of Ireland withdrew its loan and future working capital fan, fan facilities and decided to recover its debts without notice with immediate effect. As a result of the 3rd of January 2007, Music Zone went into administration with 31 stores across the UK closing two weeks earlier. The cause of the collapse was a, 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 attributed to challenging trading conditions and weak pre-Christmas trading and, and amid increasing competition and aggressive pricing across the DVD and music catalogue region <laughs> to the market. <laughs> but we, know, we, we, we all know why. By 26 January 2007, all stores were closed. Music Soul's head office was closed on the 30th of January. By the time of the closure, the company debts totaled the 31 million. And it continues. Then, as from the 5th of February 2007, retailer FOP announced it will be taking over 67 remaining stores into, in, into some of oh, Music Soul's head office warehouse facilities. In March 2007, FOP, who came in and destroyed the company, had difficulties rebranding, re re rebuilding supply contracts, and shut down a great number of high maintenance stores. On the 20th of June 2007, Fort Remain administration resulting in the closure of remaining all of Music Zone's shops. What was that bit about? They it couldn't was, get their stock. They couldn't get, yeah, uh, 2007. Yeah, now, why? Now, 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 now. Let, before we go into any of the juicy details and the reasons why, because we've got a lot of stuff here, we have some counterfeit CDs here that were purchased from Music Zone. Well, not we, really. well, we, well, we think they are, but we're Boot kind legs. of bootlegs. Right? Uh, but this is the best thing about it, right? This was formed by a guy called uh, Steve Oliver, Nick Stranding, and Erin Ozanga. And the products were books, t DVDs, t games, t shirts, and music. And the revenue was 70.4 million, which was expensive. And the owner of it at the time was Music Zone Services Limited, and the number of employees it had was a million, a thousand employees, not a million, a thousand employees I had for that, and the parent company was Fox. Now, that's all great and wonderful and spectacularly fantastic how Music Zone is done, but a few years ago, uh, my mate Chris was t had told me something that he wants to share. Yeah, but it was not till last year, till I bump into one of the world work colleagues there. Uh, well, work -y. And what did he say Tell about what? the shop? No? One well, word. Yeah. One word he used for that shop. Begins with a P. Pirate CDs. Well, he didn't say pirate CDs, he just said pirate shop. Most of the CDs that were purchased from Music Song were all a fiver. And by from what I understand from Music Song's policy, uh, I think 
they were doing they were important stuff but i think most of it was ripped off by covers of cd covers that were reproduced or either they were marketing things box sets so yeah box sets uh especially a few box sets that were available from that but most of these cds that we that we've got is um it's very very interesting because discogs is a as I, said, I always just had Discogs as the best site ever gone and, and tracked down all your covers and everything else is just brilliant and, and me and Chris have been, Chris has just been all fanatic about it. Um, and after a few investigations of this company, I've realised that while I went on to Discogs a few weeks ago, I've realised that I've also checked out these covers compared to the um, other covers. So, what we've got is a pile of CDs here that we're going to show you, these ones. And he's took them out of his special collection because his collection's all down here. And we have shown you a collection in the past, but what and we're going to show be you. Going in the bin. And these will be going in the bin because these are not genuine. No. <laughs> and I've so got a lot more first. than that. So anyway, uh, start off with uh, well, here it is. Here it is. This is a uh, Dio's Holy Diver album, as uh, classic album of well, right, ever. Uh, this is the um, supposed to be the original version of the CD, but it's not. Now this is the uh, Mercury. Uh, well, uh, this is the, the Mer Mercury label, yeah, uh, with, with copyright protection on it, which is kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, and uh, Milton Fox is not on here, by the way. Now you can very, you can tell straight away this disc is not genuine. Uh, the fact is, it's not being specially produced. The sound in it is fake, isn't it? Mm, totally slow. fake. Slows down a lot, very and slow and low and quiet, and you can't get everything on it. Um, so this is supposed to be a genuine CD. Now I'll just put me up to focus on one second. Uh, so this is the uh, inside. This is the matrix number inside it. Uh, and I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now from my point of view. This disc is totally not not genuine. This is not genuine. This disc. I tell you that on Discogs, and here's the printer. Here's the version on Discogs that they have originally. And compared to this one, this is fake. This is a real holy diver. This is not the original artwork for a start. This has been bog standardly rubbishly done. Right? Um, but this, you think that's great, the first bit is great, but then you go on the other side, look, they just replicated the, they just basically blew up the, 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 the big side of it to make it much better than that. Right, then You've got the cartoony uh, warning, keep your CDs clean, shit going on there, which is crap. And um, then you've got this, well, kind of bug standard artwork inside it, which is not genuine. I don't think that's genuine for a start. I think that's been typed out originally, isn't it? Looks like it. Looks like it's been copied and pasted in there. I think that's not, that's not been the done properly. Clip art's been done really crap. I don't even think that's, this is genuine. This, this is not a genuine release. Uh, there was no way they could have that inside the actual thing. Where's the lyrics at? The lyrics would have been on the sleeve. This is what you call as being fraudulent. It's even the worst one fraudulent. Turn out yeah, I've just shown that bit as well. That's just horrible. And what about that ACDC album I've got? Which one's that? Rocking. Oh, you know where the pictures are chopped up. Um, oh, that's um, I, that's another one. Well, we'll show you that one later. But the CD is a bit interesting. This is not genuine. Look, this is a fake CD for a start. You may think this is all genuinely done. Well, it isn't. It's a reproduction, but it's not a genuine CD. Now, it says here, uh, made in France by P Polygram Limited. Well, yeah, kind of trying to say it's actually done by Polygram. Well, this disc is absolutely fraudulent for a start. So. This is the one that was purchased from Music Zone, and this is not genuine CD. Quality is crap. Sound quality is really rubbish on it. Uh, I don't even think this is what you call it as being properly done. No. Not a good one at all. Moving on to the next ones now, uh, and these ones are these are quite interesting. These ones actually. Now these are the first ones. These are the first ones that were produced by um, Sony Music, and uh, these are the uh, Ozzy Osbourne CDs. I just say from from the from the start, these CDs that you're going to see are have been withdrawn. The first time they were withdrawn, 1997, they came out. But these were withdrawn and reissued in 2001, 
uh, as we were given a new makeover, which was good. Uh, the first thing I'm going to tell you is about this album, Blizzard of Oz. This album is the original mix on it. This was withdrawn due to the fact the packaging was rubbish for a start, but these are out of a box set. These are out of the Ozzy Osbourne box set, which came out of the 12 Masters or something it was called. Um, and for a start, sound court is good on this actually, but mm -hmm. when we get to the main bits of it, this is where it gets really interesting. This is um, this is the artwork kind of it. This is the inside. This is the main sleeve here. Then you've got a terrible, terrible image of the album inside. You've got the front cover and that inside. Terrible. Then you've got notes from Ozzy Osbourne, which I don't even think I believe this all at one word at all. Um, Blizzard of Oz, I started recording this album in 1979, and if anyone who had ever told me then that this album would still yeah. be selling 1979. 79? No. <laughs> Um, and if anyone had told me that this album would have been still selling 15 years later, that's, that's all here. Look. That, that has to be taken out of an interview or out of or something. That, that's totally not right for a start. We've got uh, pictures of Ozzy Osbourne looking really pissed off there. Which is not the thing, but this is the band, obviously. That's actually out of the original backside of the album. Straight away. You can tell it is. Then you've got uh, this picture here, which I don't know where they got that from. Took it from somewhere, some archives or whatever it was called. Then you got Freddie, then you got Ozzy in the bathroom, which it looks like that was, that was that's not a legit legit photograph for a start. Then you've got uh, Mr. Crowley one there as well, which is the one in his thing. But are they real pictures? So but they are these real pictures. I don't think they are. I think what Sonny was doing at the time was was Bog Stanley doing these wrongly, but I don't. But I've seen these on on them um, on uh, Discogs, and they come up apparently as saying that they're unknown, so they're not. These are not thingies. And now I don't know where. Now I don't believe this for a second that you would sell merchandise like this ever in the United States. I've never ever seen any merchandise like this ever. No way. There's no way you would pay 18 quid for a Ozzy Osbourne T-shirt, which is not legit anyway. Right, uh, and then you've got this other thing on the back of it, which is Sony, Sony, Amer actually it's American, Sony American number. So the United States call this number here for your great merchandise of thingies and stuff, method of payments, right? Uh, and then you've got on the back here, you've got this uh, this goddamn horrible text on it, which is all like circle around, so you've got to go around in the circle like that just to read it. And then you've got this uh, dragon on the back of it as well. Now the other thing about it is the disc is so goddamn weird because there's four of these discs that are the same prints of these ones. So these was what account originally Blizzard of Oz. Um, and on the other side of it, it, it is produced by Sony Music on the back of it, which is pretty interesting. Okay. What's uh, what's querying you? Uh, to me, that looks like. The front of the CD cover mm. been turned round and do you know what I mean? Yeah. That looks like it's been. It's on the back. It's it looks like it's on the back there. It's got that on. Yeah. So oh, I've got a funny feeling this has been done wrong. <laughs> That's Someone's looks... ripped this off. So actually, this is supposed to be. So this is supposed to be the front of it. I think. That's supposed to be the back. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, they're all like that. Yeah, that's supposed to be the buzz anyway from. Ozzy Osbourne, another one for the bin. Next one is going to be uh, Diary of a Madman, which was the the um, second release, I think it was, out of the, the label. Oh, actually, by, by, by the way, if you're wondering why these CDs are going to get thingies, Chris already has these on download as well. Uh, anyway, so now we're on to the uh, Diary of a Madman one, which was done by uh, Steve Jewell, who did this fantastic mm. cover of it, which is a brilliant guy. Crush is great. Um, so this one, uh, they've done the same again, uh, same again, they've done like the front and back cover again of it, which is pretty interesting. Another yeah, I just noticed thing that it. now. This has got a thing in it, it's just got, it's just got bog standard pictures of Ozzy on tour with Brandy Rhodes, which was this, which that image was taken from the cover of the tribute album for a start, right? One? This one, Aye. tribute, All right, that's the cover. Then you've got uh, a weird picture here of the band, which look really 
out of focus, which is really, really, really weird. Then you've got uh, Ozzy on stage again, and then you've got uh, the main, same testing again as usual. Visit Sony, visit Sony online, Sony.com for latest information of this. These, and that's an outtake by the way, that is actually off the back album, the original back album, but obviously the track titles are missing off it. And that's then you've same. got here, same again. Another one, symbol again, and the back. So these these prove for a fact that these albums were were taken off the market by Sony Entertainment. They were reissued really better with the original artwork and all the artwork intent of it as well. And, and these covers were all done. But these albums, don't buy them. They are from Music Zone. They are from Music Zone. These are all purchased from Music Zone. These are fraudulent albums. So don't buy these at all. You may think the sound quality is great on it. It's, oh, don't even go there. It's terrible. Just now, like, yeah, go on. And we would just like to know if people bought anything from Music Zone. Yeah. If Maybe. you bought any of these CDs from Music Zone or anywhere, let us know. We'd love to get your comments on this as Even well, DVDs. please. Even DVDs. Even DVDs. The DVDs are interesting as well. We'll come back to that. There's one, one, there's one DVD we want to bring up later, which is quite interesting for you Not guys. All we'll, of them. We'll, we'll, we'll all of them. Because of one rip, would that? Oh, yes. But yes. We'll come back to that. Well, we'll come out of that one. We're really interested in that one anyway. But let's come with the rest of these CDs anyway. Now we're going to go on to the Kiss ones. Yeah, these ones. These, the story, uh, the, the horrible, well, what I understand actually, these were genuinely released, but they were unknown again. Uh, so I think uh, Universal uh, at, the, at the time were bringing these out in 1986. The, the, to be honest with you, these are horrible. The, scene, the, the sounds on it are terrible. Sound quite is dreadful on it. Um, but what what I love about it is is that it, every time you have to open the CD up, you get like the story of it inside, which you get this, the, the you get part seven or something of it on shortly after Kiss. And then you get this other one, which is Love Gun, which is uh, 1977. All right, these are written by Robert W. Court. Okay, then you've got. Uh, the other one, uh, with Destroyer, where this is a uh, kiss was on the name, but obviously that's the, but okay, right, okay. Um, I tell you from the start, right, the guy who engineered, who had remastered these, the sound quality is horrible indeed. Now, what I, I really hate about this is that all of the artwork in here, I mean, look at that artwork there, that is just bloody awful. There's no way, no way, that, I mean, that, that for a start, um, it's taken up. That is off the original um, insert sleeve of the release of it, and apparently, compared to what I understand, I mean, all right, the front, the front of it's like the, the, the double, the double album, obviously from it. And it's not really it's actually fake. Uh, so that's supposed to be a double album there of it. Titles are missing off for obvious yeah. reasons. But what I, what this is interesting about the, the, the copyright on this says, 1997 Kiss Catalog Limited. I don't know my number of focus is out of, out of range there, but I'll just give you, that's it. Uh, 97 Kiss Catalog Limited. Well, that's that's, for, that's fake for a start because Kiss don't own these albums because it would say Universal and Casablanca. But Kiss Catalog, I've never heard of it. It was never came out on Discord before. The strange thing about that one with this one, this mm -hmm. one falls out. That's a, yeah, that's, a, that's a fold out. Well, now, come on. Who the fuck wants to put that on the wall? But look how it's been chopped off. Well, it's been that. Yeah, yeah. You see, right? Look at that. <laughs> see the bottom of there. Look at that. Where hey, someone can't do their job right. I tell you, that's all been cut off there, <sighs> and it's not been done right. So you can tell for a start. The the, the 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 print's actually pretty good on this. So the kiss. If you want to be a kiss army fan, yeah, be the kiss army. But like, have a kiss army on there. The, I don't know if that, that suits you actually. It's a what? Suits you. It just suits me, is it? <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, that's, one, that's, an, that's a Dynasty one, by the way. Uh, I don't I don't buy, I don't really go by this. This is not a genuine Kiss thing, by the way. Uh, so none of the, not, there's no merchandise in it either, but Kiss Catalog 1997. There's no such thing. And, and where's this from? Well, that's interesting. It's from the VHS, isn't it? That's from the Kiss movie, that is. You know what's that? That's from the Kiss movie? Hmm. It's in the video. It's like a video. Oh, oh let's put, video image, put the camera next to the video image on it. Very interesting. Very clever. So the discs wise, uh, they, are, they are supposed to be produced by Universal. They're not. Uh, for a start, 
the way this feels just feels new because it feels really new indeed. I mean, these are supposed to be genuine. Ah, these are not genuine. Some of this is not oh, rubbish indeed on this one, but when when they came out in the in the USA, they were better. But uh, the other thing about it is it says a polygram company. It doesn't have any copyright information on it. it doesn't say where it was produced. Or well, he says there Mercury Records 1997, but well, no copyright on it. And then they're so flimsy as well. The discs are so crap. They could just snap in two seconds. It's just literally rubbish. Terrible. I've got the next one now. This is a this is a very unusual one. This um, there's a collection to that, isn't it? There is a collection uh, to this one. That's not part of it. First of all, uh, right. First of all, let's get one thing straight. Jesus Priest fans love Jesus Priest. Great songs. They're enough to be like fantastic. First of all, I want to show you these two CDs are out of a box set. These are genuinely out of a box set. These were sold individually by Music Zone at the time, and it is Judas Priest. Uh, this is the remaster of Street, Street Screaming for Vengeance, and this is also Defenders of the Earth. Right. First thing about it is these are from the original box set. <laughs> so they are. That's the genuine box set that came out. Oh, that yeah. Metal Works, nineteen seventy-seven to nineteen ninety-four. Yes, I'm right about that. The other thing about it is. Oh, good CDs. These are great CDs. A bit of the best, actually, the best releases of the lot. Now, what I can tell you is there's, there's strip lines on here, which is interesting. Uh, there's red lines on here, um, which says uh, PR, okay, RP. So it's Jesus Priest. It's Jesus Priest, basically. It's Jesus Priest box set that comes out like that. And we'll, we'll show Jesus it Priest. Yeah. And we'll show you the picture of that uh, on this video at the end of it. Um, now, where he got these ones, I need to tell time. straight away, these were... These, well, we weren't too sure at first. We weren't sure where these were came out of the box set. Until the discourse. Until the discourse came along and gave us the great information that these are part of the box set itself. Now, compared to the two, to the two albums that we have here, there is two CDs we have here from Music Zone that were purchased, which is British Steel and Turbo Lover. God, the sound now, them. Now... This just gets me even more. This album is fake. The reason being is this is not genuine. This is not a genuine number. CD, I don't think CD is a genuine number. It would either have a, a Columbia on it or CD. Never seen this issue ever. 342412. You put it on Discogs, uh, it comes up saying it is a fake CD. It is fake. This has been basically done terribly, terribly, terrible. This is. The back of this CD looks absolutely dreadful. It looks like it, it looks like it's been damaged or something, or it's been through a, a machine. Um, this is supposed to be issued by Columbia Records. They never ever issued this version. Sound card on this is bloody awful. Ugh. It's like bring a dishwasher, and that is all you get in the album. Look, what's that supposed to say? What? What's that? What's all this stuff on here? Did did. All right, okay, and uh, and that's it. <laughs> just nothing. The sound court the is fake. Uh, CD is fake for a start. It, it's well. been uh, it's it's pretty damaged actually. The CD, but you've played it that many times. But this uh, this CD is fake for a start. Uh, the reason being is the sound court is not genuine. It doesn't even sound like Judas Priest. Then we got then we got this really weird one. This bizarre one here. Thickest, thickest bootleg in the world. This is a. Um, this is obviously a terrible lover. This is shocking. Enough. Which this is shocking. This is shocking. This Looks one. Shocking. Uh, first of all, I just say CD version. This is a, a it has got the original CBS number in it, which is interesting. Which is CB CD CBS two six six four one, which is correct because uh, it's Columbia. That's an original pressing. That actually, that's pretty interesting. Does it match this? This this though, it's got here four six three. 3652 and that does not match that CD so what they've done they've they've put in a, a mix match CD here that this is not I mean it's supposed to be the Columbia release of it it's not this is but this is actually the rich off out of the original CBS release of it that was reissued in 1986 but 1991 it was but that one terrible terrible Terrible. Now this is the this is the bizarre bit of it. This is the booklet inside this. 
Uh, I can tell straight away on the back of this album they've removed all the titles off the bottom of the album. Straight away they have. I'll put it on camera, you can probably see there. Look. Oh, look at that job there. Look at that. Nice shopping job there with the artwork being removed off there. That's very, very good. Terrible. So anyway, um, yeah, oh, that nice 3D image of the old Judas Priest logo there. <laughs> it looks bloody awful. And then we've got white paper. <laughs> just black paper on it. With lyrics there, which I think are wrong anyway for a start. The, oh, so horrible. And uh, then we've got the... More uh, lyrics. More lyrics on there as well. I think these are all wrong. These. Uh, what's it say? Parental guidance. Yeah, parental guide. PG, yeah. All oh, kiddies. Yay, kiddie times. Uh, and then we'll have more lyrics again. Yeah. And then the back sleeve of it is, uh, oh, cartoony. Keep your seeds clean again. Rubbish. And that's it. Uh, it says, record and mix exclusively with digital, Sony digital tape machines. Now... That is awful, awful, awful CD. So they're all bootlegs for a start. So that's been, so these are all basically all these you've seen here are trash, trash. Now we get on to the most, probably the last part of it, which is one of the most really weird ones we we checked out. Uh, the first thing I'll tell you is this compilation was not officially released by the band. Um, it was actually uh, it's a bootleg. And CD. sold in music zone as well. So music zone. This is supposed to be for these this album, as I understand, was uh, was was for fans out of an internet competition. So it was. And it's best to beast. Now if you've seen the CNH and V, they did sell this recently, but they never they, didn't. they did. Did they No. No, I never no. It was this was a um, a fans thing where you had to it was an online poll basically, in nineteen ninety six it was when they did it. It was an online poll where you had to Put your best 50 songs of to make the album of this one, which would be working fine for it. Um, but what I don't like about it is the fact that this is um, this album is unofficial. This is not an official release. It's officially been done by EMI for a start, because the fact is, there's a lot of things I will say about this album. Is that it is a good compilation, but I would stay away from it a lot. Because the artwork in here is so goddamn shocking, it's not being officially licensed by the band. Ron Smallwood is not has not licensed this at all. Um, so I mean, we've got good pictures from the tour, which we, we actually, actually I think these were donated by the website when the website was up and running. I think they were. I'm sure they were done by that. In fact, I'm sure it was. Um, so we've got more in there as well. I know my focus is crap, but never mind. And then we've got more there. Um, well, it's a pretty thick book, actually, this one. It's pretty well painted in it. Anyway, we get an idea of anywhere where it is. And uh, the back sleeve of it, uh, yeah, it looks like which is like sort of shooed up this sort of thing there. And there you are. There you are, small one there, yeah, yeah. Oh, it says, I may would like to thank everyone who, who has helped them over the years. There are far too many uh, to mention, but you are there anyway. Right, so this is basically taken from... The Iron Maiden fan club, uh, as I understand, the Iron Maiden website is now ironmaiden.com and it's not .uk. Never existed that, that actually. And the um, email address was maiden at pncl, pncl uk. So check it out. Try and have a go at that one. Try and email someone about that. See if they can. That, but this was not officially released by the band. It was never released officially by... Uh, Discogs the Discogs confirms, confirms it. it that this is a fake album. This bootleg. is an unreleased bootleg CD. Never officially released by EMI. Never seen it in now, HMP. Unfortunately, we don't have a disc. The disc's been lost. Uh, it's interesting, though, how they've put on here. Uh, what does it say? Uh, yeah, it says, um, uh, Remastered by Simon Hayworth and Murray, Murray Harris at Chop and Map Studios. Well, that's wrong for a start. Because no, that is actually, it's never, Chop and Map Studios is, doesn't exist. Whether it's EMI's. Private. Private thing or whatever. Don't know. But no. um but the artwork is pretty good. fan made uh by fans. It's a good, good compilation. It's a pretty good compilation. It's probably got some of the most the only the, the rarest tracks in here probably is Fear the Dark. That version is brilliant, which I have on the uh download of it. And then I have got Hallow Be Thy Name, which is which I which I think that version is uncut. is uncut because that's the only version that's there was the album version. I listened to the album version a few days ago. And I've noticed that the album version, compared to this version, album version is cut by 
10 seconds. <laughs> so, um, but that's not all. Because now, we come, we come it's to the, the finale. Best. This is the finale. This is the best bit. The Iron Maiden re-releases, reissues, but now confirmed by Discogs, it's an unofficial box set that was never released. And it was the Iron uh, And it, it was, was the, Eddie's the Eddie face with the um, with the thing in it and stuff. You'll see, and the, you'll see the picture on there anyway. And it should not have been but sold. It should never been sold. Uh, so all these albums you're going to see Where the are fuck the, did they get uh, these from? thingies from. Well, it, it mm -hmm. says it comes from uh, Russia. It comes from... Where did it come from again? I don't know, but where did they get these from? Where did they get these from, though? Look at these. These are these special enhanced ones. These are Russian imports. We think. They're Russian. I can tell by the fact because they've got the IMS stickers on this one. Well, one's got IMS on that one. Um, and, and anyway. We and did you get your... We got our Queen CDs from there as well. And yeah. We got two the, yeah, big and, ones. And you may have seen them on the, uh, on the Queen uh, video I re redid this year. How about that one? Good laugh, that is. So anyway, uh, yeah. So now, so here we go with the un unofficial albums from the unofficial releases of Iron Maiden. These were never ever released. These are the bootleg albums. These are supposed to be the EMI genuine releases, and they're not. First of all, if oh, oh, scratchy, scratchy. Oh, that sounds really good. That is terrible for a start. It's not the original number. Uh, it's being produced as it says EMI Swindon. That is bullshit. EMI Swindon closed down at the time that these came out. But the booklets are good all in here. Booklets are good. Um, for collectability issues. Um, I do have to say that, to be honest, these CDs are actually nice, but the box set would be, would be nice to have as that. There's some weird... There's some very good images in here of the band. I mean, the, 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 the these good are from thingies. When the sound quality on those enhanced ones were actually bloody awesome. Um, but these were not officially released by the band um, because apparently these are both bootlegs again. These are remastered by Simon Hayworth and uh, at Chocomod Studios. And again, it's got the same information on there as well. Um, I can tell you straight away that some of the paint damage, some of the paint. He's, he's actually printing off the paint right now. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's interesting about the CD? It's there actually goes, it's got bonus videos in here as well. I've got there on this one. It has got bonus videos of Iron Maiden, a fact with the opera, taken from Life of the Rainbow, from what source? Mm. The discs look source. crystal clear, but look, yeah. you can see the picture on the. Yeah, that's that's a print. That's a print on there. That's why. No, it's more CDs in there. Oh yeah, oh the the, the edge on it. Ah, uh, it looks really thing. You can see on probably seeing the camera from his side here. The edge on that one. Look at the edge on that. Oh my god, it looks really, really bad. Motion to know how to blow things up. It looks like it looks like it's been on the on the, on the machine itself. They're printing on the machine, but they must have really done it in high quality gloss on it as well. So I'll go on the other one. And by the way, what I'm referring to is these things here with Eddie's face on it. These are all at the box set, by the way. These mm -hmm. are not the these are not these were not supposed to be sold by EM, uh, by Music Zone. Uh, this is the other one. Uh, this is the what time was this one? Uh, this is Power Slave, which we we just reviewed this many many times ago, and this is the one that uh, it gets me a lot because this one is the Russian. This is the Russian CD. We think. Well, this is because well, it's, we're not uh, too sure it's yet, oh. IMS stick on there. Russian imports, pretty good indeed. Um, bullet inside again is the same. Um, it, uh, apart from the fact they blanked out that number there. Oh, great job, Larry's. Oh, where's that from? Well, check it out on Discogs so of the original CD when it came out. Slave Notes, it says. Slave Notes. That's a first. Uh, so, this is all supposed to be... This is all supposed to be uh, really good quality. In fact, the, the, the pitch, they're pretty thick books, though, when you think about it. How, how much detail they're putting into this. Uh, this is the album that was, uh, that was pretty good, actually, when it came out. Um, but you guess you guess the same again. It's the same thing again. It's got the same information on the back of it. But this one's pretty weird because how the hell they've got the rights to to scan this in with and overlap that number there, and over paste it with that number is really interesting. Mm. You notice that they've put on the original cover, they've all pasted that. It's so weird. Um, and then you've got that image again, and the bonus features in this one 
is two is spin like an ace is high, uh, which uh, which I have to say. So as you can tell from the sleeves of this one, the, the, the spines on there, it comes out as a box set itself. Then we're on to the next one, which is fear, well, uh, fear. Well, they're all just the same. Well, they're all the same anyway. You get the idea anyway. But this box set was sold out of Music Zone for a fiver. Well, the sleeves were purchased for a fiver each. When you bought them, um, the, the 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 videos on here are well, the qualities are bad. Um, sound quality is alright, but this is the rest of it's really bad. Um, but I, I've never ever seen these produced ever because EMI never would do these ever again. The box set, as I say, uh, we bought the discos and check the box set. I'll put the picture on the video. Um, just compare it to that one. It's uh, it's interesting. So all I'm going to say, just to wrap it up. DVDs. Your, your when we scan them DVDs, they rip them. Yeah, the one rip. We he bought some CD DVDs out of um, out of uh, Music Zone as well. They were also fraudulent uh, ones because uh, the 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 video that he got uh, the DVD he got was um, never mind. But was, what was that one? House on Haunted Hill. House on Haunted Hill. That was a fake. But well, no one was scanned them in on the scanner. Well, we, uh, there's a tool like you, can, you can download called the scanning tool and on DVDs, and then scan them in. It doesn't identify itself. It comes up with saying it's unknown. Even with, with which final general was another one. Yeah, which but was the flint laptop spat the discs out in there. Yeah, no, it did. It so some, so we, so all in. I've got a conclusion to say that I think that Music Zone was illegally weren't paying tax on any of these CDs because we we found out. A few a few years ago, that it was um, maybe the fact that Music Zone was just just buying stuff out, or whether Music Zone was and this right. new company that took over couldn't find and the new it. company that, that says here FOP, who tried to take it over and get in their establishment. They were maybe they were couldn't find they it. couldn't find it and they couldn't find the the, 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 the main things for us. Uh, I mean, do you? I mean, do you? I mean, if, if this shop ever came back again, it would have been great because I mean, no, like, the CDs nah, were good. I won't buy but from it. The thing about it is, when we bought them, we, we, we got ripped off because we didn't know at the time. We didn't know at the time that they were illegally selling stuff that was bringing. But when we bought, when we started buying them in two thousand and what two thousand, when we went down the shop every every single time we went down, there was so many sales on. But internet wasn't the thing though back then, was no, it not? We now? didn't have internet, internet shopping was never ever introduced by so Amazon came two thousand and two. Uh, and yeah, but later on though. But later on for that. But who buys CDs now these days? You torrent now. Yeah but Torrent's it's a shock it's a shame though. It's a shame for it it is a shame for the companies who lost money on this because if they revenue was seventy million on this thing and they were they were they were buying stuff out. Well, we just want to know so, if people's bought. We want to know. We'd like to, we'd like to know in the next follow up video when we do this. Leave your comments and questions on this. And if you have bought stuff from Music Zone ever, ever, anything, let us know, and let us know what you have bought for the past few years. Because this is an interesting thing. We'd like to continue doing this because, well, I mean, we still would love to know. We'd love to know. We all we all know why the problems had started. Because but, I can't right? understand. Music Zone would never sell Motley Crue, White Snake. No. It was only like Iron Maiden, mm. Ozzy Osbourne, mm. Queen, mm. all the bands with mm. box sets, bootleg CDs. Yeah. Motley Crue never had nothing like no. that. No. White Snake never. Deep Purple never. And that. Deep Purple see when they issued the CD of. Um, well, when Deep Purple had issued the CD music of the well. CD of CD of the when they, when they, Music Zone issued the CD of the of that thing, that's it. Just another thing that Chris brought out actually that we didn't ever get review on Queensville. I'll bring this in now actually since it is a, since it is a bit of a Music Zone thing. Um, I've checked this out on Discogs and uh, and this has now been officially released. This is the bootleg. Ha <laughs> the Queen thing. Here's the Queen thing. It's this. This is uh, the Queen uh, box set. This is the Queen 3 3 video box set. Um, yeah, uh, this is a very interesting release. This has not been produced at all. <laughs> this is a. It's a, it's a company called BCI, which is the biggest chain that whoever made, made um, Cinema Club seed videos. 
And this, um, I have to tell you, <laughs> there's, there's actually there's dates on this, would you believe? I can't believe there's actually dates on this. There's actually production dates on this, these tapes. We've got, uh, we've got Live, uh, Live at Budapest, which has been released on DVD. Live at Rio, which has been released on DVD, which is shit. Uh, and that one, we're Rocky, which has been cut now and also been renamed a stupid uh, little thing on it. Now, the other thing that all I'm going to tell you is, is that the, 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 when, these, when these came out, these were never, these cannot be traced at all. These cannot be traced. These are, um, in my opinion, this box set is absolutely, well, I don't know. Because apparently, according to, according to the Discogs, it says that this item was unofficially released. You bought it for, how much did you buy for? £10. £10 out of Music Zone. Uh, and I'll just say from my point of view, these will be pretty interesting to go through as well. So let's have a look at this tape here. This is a uh, Live of Budapest. Now, as you can tell, uh, yeah, very nice, cheap, uh, made of the VCR logo there, which is uh, interesting. It's got a date code on it as well, mm -hmm. which is the 22nd of the 10th, 98. And there it is. 22nd of the 10th, 98. That's when it was produced, that CD. It's an E90 cassette, which is good. Um, so the next one now. So I'm singing. I'll just say from my point of view, I don't like the way I, I, they feel so cheap. I mean, that's the back of it. That's been that's been copied off the, directly off the back sleeve of the original VHS tape, would you believe? With the a bottom bit cut off, which is one thing. But VCI was producing these at the time, which is kind of thing. So that production date again is the twenty second of the tenth, ninety eight. Okay. First one. Now we'll have a look at Rio. This is Rio. Again, same idea. Yeah, there you go. Another bag. And this production date on it is the 23rd of the 9th, 98. So there you go. 23rd of the 9th, 98. Again, very short. That's how that's it. It's an E65. Are these factory, they're like factory pressings. These are factory pressings. They must have come from one sort of factory that done this. And the last one is, uh, this is this one, which is uh, the Rio Rocky. Oh, God. Uh, that sounds really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's out, this looks brand new, actually. It's still on replay. Jake calling this is 28th of the 10th, 98. So, just to recap again, we've got three dates here. Now, this is interesting. Now, three dates on here. The 22nd of the 10th, 98, the 23rd, the 9th, 98, and the 28th of the 10th, 98. So we've got two tapes produced in October. One was produced in September. So where's August? <laughs> where's what? August. Where's what? Well, where, where is? So they are. If you want to have a little check on that on Discogs, this was an official, it's an unofficial Queen release. That was from Music Zone and purchased Music Zone, and that's the the way it is. Even the catalog numbers don't match. No, they don't. Yeah, the catalog numbers are interesting on this. I've got to show the catalog numbers on this, which is M. Uh, so they be the same. Camera. It's MC two one three eight T, MC two o three two T, and MC two one one six T. If you put them in a discog, it doesn't come anything because probably you think it would be the same if there was a box. Yeah, I would have thought it would be the same, but there's no number on this though. I mean, it's got like a it's got a, a barcode number there, which is interesting, which is uh uh one three eight oh six seven one three seven. That doesn't make any sense at all that does. But they've all been barcoded. They are, have not got any barcodes in this, which is pretty unusual. But it's an interesting find that. I mean I've never ever seen it. I mean I, I I've never ever seen this box come set. Here, it's nice for the collectability of it though. But it's never been seen. So, so what we want to know is, right? This is what I would love to know: Is music was at the time Music Zone illegally doing stuff, or were they buying stuff in, or were they just? But what? There's no Counterfeit. answer. There's what? Counterfeit. Counterfeits. What do you think about counterfeits? These. What's the term? Traf trafficking. Trafficking. No Imp tax paid either. Important. No tax was paid on any of these. Any of these. Any of these things, by the way. None of these were none of these things by music were ever 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 done. So, as to conclude, so just to wrap it up. Um, your thoughts about this? What do you think? Of overall, what do you think of overall? And the complaint about the, the government's complaint about downloads. Well, the government's well, 
As no, you all know, the government's complaining about downloads. Yeah, and they, they say done save this. our music, save our records, save our and CDs. And this company's done this. Why do you think people are buying vinyl and buying the buying vinyl more vinyl this year than anything else? Because downloads are just oh, okay. I mean, it's all right to buy, but you can't afford CDs now. I mean, prices in prices up in H and V are flipping hell. Just for for example, if you were to buy this right for uh, twenty quid out of H and V. Good. If you can afford it. Well, we don't do that now. We download. Because it's cheaper. That's <laughs> free. Anyway, so what we'll do is we'll bring this up in a second video. We'll bring up another video of this one. We'll bring it back. Uh, if you have, But as I say, if you have any, if you guys out there have had any buyings from music on this company, we'd love to know. We'd love to know basically if you bought anything that's, that's, that is being bootlegged. Uh, check the CDs. Check the CD numbers. As I say, I'll put all the, the scans on the end of the video. So you guys don't forget it. And I'll leave it there for now. And until then, I'll see you then. It's Chris and me. Thanks.